Hey, what is up you guys? So my name is Tara and I make handmade skincare products here on my channel. I also do Etsy related videos and business related videos. So if that stuff sounds interesting to you guys, subscribe because I post three times a week. So there's a lot of content here for you guys. So I get a lot of questions from you guys. Basically, just asking for advice on how to make skincare products. I get questions anywhere ranging between equipment, sanitization, how to formulate things, and just anything in between. So I figured I should make a series that's more targeted towards beginners who don't really know exactly what they need, where to start, or even how to like come up with a recipe. So just to give you guys a little brief summary of what this series is gonna be like. First of all, today we are gonna be talking about equipment and what types of equipment you need Need in order to make skincare products. My next video I'm going to talk about sanitization, the next one I'm going to be talking about preservatives, and then the next one I believe is when we are going to start talking about how to formulate products. Alright, so let's just get into it. Let's talk about equipment needed to make skincare products. So this can vary beyond so many different things. There's so much equipment that you could use to make skincare products. I'm basically gonna be going into all the equipment that I use to make my skincare products. So you're gonna know all the little, you know, gadgets that I use. Anyways, let's begin. First off, a scale. This is crucial to making skincare products. So instead of actually weighing out your recipes, like in tablespoons or cups or teaspoons, you want to weigh out your formulas. And if you don't understand the whole weighing process or the percentage process, I will talk about that more a little bit later in the series of when I start talking about how to formulate a product. So don't worry about that right now, just you need a scale that is necessary to make skincare products. Now there are lots of different types of scales. The specific type of scale you want is a scale that weighs to 0.01 grams because you're mainly going to be making recipes in grams. Typically recipes aren't weighed out in ounces because it's just too big of an increment. So you want a scale that weighs to 0.01 gram. And I will have links down below to all the equipment I talk about on this video. So if you need to buy any of this stuff, links below. The next important thing you need are pipettes. I believe that's what they're called. They're those little, you know, plastic little pipes that you use to, you know, like put little drops of things. Because when you're making skincare products, you're working with like small increments, like your preservative, your extracts, your hydrolyzed proteins, or anything else that's weighed out in small amounts, you're going to want to use a little dropper. It even comes in handy for other things like for distilled water or rose water when you're making a smaller amount. So those little pipettes, get yourself some. They're really inexpensive. They're disposable and it just keeps your products a lot more sterile too using those. The next thing you need is a temperature gun. I use this all the freaking time and I don't know what I did before it. And the reason you need a temperature gun is a lot of times you are heating up formulations when you're making skincare products and you want to be able to take an accurate temperature reading and using a temperature gun is the best way to do it. So get yourself a temperature gun. It's a necessity when making skincare products. Highly recommend. The next thing that I think is crucial, it's not really necessary, but I put it on my crucial list and that is a pH meter. pH balanced skincare products are really popular nowadays. People are discovering the importance of balancing the pH of your skin and I personally prefer pH balanced products as well. It's not necessary for everybody, but if you like pH balanced products, get yourself a pH meter. They're really inexpensive. Link down below along with everything else I talk about in this video. The next thing you're going to need, which you probably already have, is a stovetop. And you want a stovetop because you heat up a lot of formulations. So you need a stovetop. And along with that stovetop, you need a, uh, a pan, like a skillet or a pot, just to put some water in. That way you can put your beakers in the, the pot. Yeah, that made sense, yeah. I do it in every single one of my videos. If you don't know what I'm talking about, um, since we're already on the topic of beakers, I wouldn't consider beakers to be crucial. I personally really prefer using beakers because it's just so much easier using them. You have a, even on the beaker itself, it has a, how many milliliters it is. So you have a good estimate of how much the beaker can hold. It has a little like pouring spigot so you can pour it out nice and smoothly. And they're just nice to have. Really what you probably only need to make skincare products is just a glass container. Any glass container would work. A measuring cup, a glass bowl. But it's best to keep your equipment and dishes that you use for making skincare products separate from the things you use in your actual kitchen. So if you do want to start making skincare products and you don't really want to buy beakers, go out buy some glass bowls or glass measuring cups and those will work 
work fine. Just don't use them for cooking as well. But if you're going to be making products a lot, buying beakers is probably your best bet. So I do highly recommend getting beakers, but they're not crucial. I didn't have them when I first started out. It was fine, but beakers made my world a lot easier. Another piece of equipment that I find to be crucial is an immersion blender. Now, I don't use this in every formulation, but a lot of formulations I use immersion blenders. You can probably get by without having immersion blender for a few recipes, but in the end, you're probably going to end up having to buy one. So you might as well get one now. And this goes for hand mixers as well. I really only use a hand mixer when I make sugar scrubs, but Sugar scrubs are really popular, so you're probably gonna be making them. Um, this goes for like salt scrubs too, really any kind of scrub. I typically use a hand mixer, so get yourself a hand mixer too. It'll make your life a lot easier. Okay, now I'm gonna get into the things that aren't really necessary, but will make your life a lot easier and things that I specifically use. I already talked about beakers, but beakers is one of them. The next thing is mixing bowls. This can just be like some glass mixing bowls, maybe even plastic. I personally prefer glass. It's easier to sanitize than plastic. So if you're gonna get yourself some big mixing bowls to make things in. Typically, I use like mixing bowls if I'm making like a big thing of like bath salts, but I don't sell bath salts anymore. Or maybe if you're making like a big thing of sugar scrub, I guess that would be good in. Just depending on what you're making, you might not need mixing bowls if you have beakers. So if you're gonna be making something you think you need a big bowl for, get some, some big glass bowls. Another thing is funnels. Funnels do make your life a lot easier. I typically don't use funnels too much because like I said, the beakers have that nice little spigot. So it makes it easy to pour your product out, but it is nice to have when you sometimes need it. And I do have a lot of funnels and I do find myself using them occasionally, but it's not the end of the world if you don't have them. Um, mixing tools. Okay, I guess this should be on the necessities because you do need mixing tools. And the mixing tools that I, actually the one mixing tool I find myself using other than the immersion blender and the hand mixer are popsicle sticks. And these are just really easy because they're really inexpensive and it's just nice, you know, just take a popsicle stick, mix it up, pour it in, toss it in the trash, grab another one when you need them. They're just disposable. So popsicle sticks are the best things to use, I think, for mixing. They're better than plastic spoons. I do buy plastic spoons sometimes, but I don't really use them as much. And I know plastic spoons aren't really as environmentally friendly as popsicle sticks, so that's why I try to stick with popsicle sticks. You can buy big popsicle sticks, small ones, whatever you want. I will put down below um, the link to the ones I use, but if you want like big jumbo ones, I guess I could put the link to that as well, because that would come in handy for like bigger mixtures that you're making. Paper towels, those are really important. Actually, I guess that would kind of be a necessity as well because I typically like to clean my work surface off with paper towels rather than towels. I just feel like paper towels are more sanitized and I don't want to go too much into the sanitization. The paper towels sort of overlap with that because I'm going to talk about sanitization in my next video, but we'll just leave it at that. Paper towels, they're your best friend. Get those. I know they're not environmentally friendly. You're wasting a lot, but that's what you got to do sometimes to keep your work area sterilized and to prevent any like bacteria from growing in your products. Another thing that I really like to use is not, it's not necessary, are mason jars. I will make like a big batch of like clay masks because their shelf lives are really long on those. And then I'll like store them in a sterilized mason jar. And I'll talk about how I sterilize mason jars in my next video on sanitization, but that's what I'll do. I'll also purchase some ingredients sometimes off of suppliers and then I will store it in a mason jar. So just mason jars are nice to have. I mean, if you make like too much product and you don't want to bottle it up, you can store it in a mason jar. They're just, they're great to have. I use them all the time. I actually have way too many mason jars. Everybody loves mason jars. Get yourself some. Another thing I, this is like a really important thing I think to have. It's not necessary. Um, you want a big, like separate container to store like all of your equipment in. And I'll show you guys. Let me, let me grab mine. Okay. So this is what I, okay. I don't know how well you can see. So this is what I store all of my like equipment in, my beakers, my hand mixer, my immersion blender. I just keep it all in this big plastic tub and I just keep it all in here. That way I know it's in like a closed area. So, you know, nothing like, I don't know. So nothing can get in it. It just stays in its own little room and stays like nice and clean. Even though these in here aren't technically sterilized, they're still separate from everything that, you know, it prevents any like possible hair from getting in there, dust, just, just keeps it separate from everything else and keeps it clean. Cause like I said, you want to keep your equipment separate from your kitchen equipment. So having just like a tub like this, well, it'll make your life a lot easier. It's not necessary, but this is what I like to use. And I will in my next video talk a little bit about sanitizing equipment and how to 
store it away and I will talk about this again because that is what I store them in but there's a special way you need to store your equipment that's already been sterilized but I'll talk about that in my next video all right and the last piece of equipment that I find myself using pretty regularly are those little like paper Dixie cups and what I use this for, it kind of like just varies, but sometimes I'll just need to like pour some distilled water in it to like clean off my pH meter, or sometimes I just need to like weigh something in it really quick. It's just a nice container I can grab that's already clean. So the little Dixie cups are kind of just nice to have on hand just in case you need them. Um, that is basically all the equipment that I use. I hope I didn't really forget anything. I kind of feel like I am forgetting things because I slightly feel like this is overlapping with sanitization because there are some sanitization equipment I use as well. But again, I want to leave that for my next video because I feel like these are both individually too big of topics and I don't want to combine them together because it'll be way too long of a video. That's basically all the equipment I use to make my skincare products. If I forget anything that I use to make skincare products, I will mention it down in the description box. So check the description box just in case I forgot anything. And again, all the links to all the equipment I mentioned in this video will be linked down below. And keep in mind, there is still so much more equipment out there to making skincare products. And I don't want to go into detail about all the equipment. It all comes down to personal preference and like what kind of budget you have. But this is what I personally use to make my skincare products and just things that I find necessary and things that make my life easier. If you have anything that you use to make your skincare products that you feel like is necessary and just makes your life so much easier, let me know down in the comments. Maybe it's something I've never heard of and maybe I will try it out. Maybe it'll make my life a little bit easier. But yeah, so keep in mind there's a whole video coming out on sanitization next and that will talk about a little bit more equipment that I use that are sanitization involved. So I hope this video helped uh, clear things up for you guys on equipment and I hope you guys are excited for this new series. Like I said, it's going to be targeted towards beginners. So if this stuff uh, feels a little obvious to you, it's probably because you're not a beginner. So one more thing, as I mentioned in every single one of my videos, I do sell handmade skincare products over on Etsy. I will link my Etsy shop down below and I'll link it up here so it's easy for you guys to find. Hope you all have a great day and I hope to see you guys next time. Bye! I'm stuck in the motions I've been consumed by the wrath of time like I'm from I'm shattered in this life It's still the path that I've chosen Because I've had a vision Now I'm on a mission to find myself